So in this video, I am going to install Linux Zorin OS in a desktop computer. So this is a Zorin website and this is the latest release. It's Zorin OS 17.1. So this is an explanation. What is Zorin? So I'll click on download Zorin. Now there are three versions here. There is Zorin Pro. So this is a paid version and it's about $48. There's Zorin Core. This is free. There's also Zorin for Education. And this is also free. So I'm going to download Zorin Core. I'll click skip to download. So the size of this Zorin Core is 3.5 gigs. So this is the system requirements to install Zorin. This is the CPU, the RAM, the storage. This is the display resolution. So on the storage, the minimum requirement for Core is 15 gigs. For education 24 gig and for pro 40 gig so you can also install it in chromebooks and raspberry pi so i'm going to be using etcher to create the bootable usb drive i'll download etcher so i'll download the first option this is for windows and this is the installer okay so the software was downloaded so i have the etcher software in my desktop as well as the zorin iso file so i'm going to open up etcher I'm going to click flash profile. So this is a Zorin ISO file. I'm going to select it, click open. I'll select target. I'll select the USB drive. Click on select one and click on flash. Click yes. So this is creating the bootable USB drive. So the bootable USB drive was created. So now I'm going to take the bootable drive and boot up the computer. So I temporarily disable secure boot in this computer. So this is the boot menu. I'm going to select the USB drive to boot up from. So there's some options here. The first one is try and install Zorin. Second option, try and install Zorin OS, safe graphics. And the third option, try and install Zorin. And this is modern NVIDIA drivers. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can choose this. There's also UEFI firmware settings. So I'm going to select the first option, enter. Okay, so this is the install menu. This is the welcome section. And under the welcome section, you can choose your language here. So there are two options. You can try Zorin OS without installing. And the second option, install Zorin. So I'm going to select install Zorin. This is the keyboard layout. So here you have to choose. You can choose the language here. Also, you can type here to test your keyboard and this will detect your keyboard layout. So I'm going to leave it as English US. Click continue. So this is updates and other software. The first option is download updates while installing Zorin. I'm going to leave that checked. So the second checkbox is to install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. I'll leave that checked. So the third checkbox says don't participate in the census. I'm going to check that. Click continue. So this is the installation type. So it says this computer currently has no detected operating systems. What would you like to do? So there are two options here. Erase disk and install Zorin or something else. So if you choose something else, you can create and resize petitions yourself. You can choose multiple petitions for Zorin. I'm going to select the first option. I'm going to erase the entire disk and install Zorin. So I'm going to click install now. So this pop-up box says write the changes to the disk. If you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disk. Otherwise, you'll be able to make further changes manually. And it gives you a warning. It will destroy all data on any petitions you have removed as well as on the petitions that are going to be formatted. That's okay. I'm going to click continue. So it wants to know here, where are you? So here you can type your location. You can type it here. I'm currently in New York. You can also move this red dot to wherever location you are. So here, for example, I can type Toronto. So I'm going to click continue. 
So here is where you have to input a name, username, a computer name, and password. So in the section, it says your name. So you have to type a name. I'm going to type John. For computer name, I'm going to type desktop. So for the username, I'm going to leave it as John. I'm going to type a short password just for this demonstration. I'm going to retype the password. So there are some more options here. The first one is log in automatically. The second option is require my password to log in. So I'm going to leave it as require my password to log in. Click continue. So the software has been installed. So installation was complete. I'm going to click on restart now. So it says here, please remove the installation medium and press enter. I'm going to remove the USB drive, hit enter on the keyboard. Okay, I get a login screen. I'm going to log in. So if you want to take a tour, you can click on Start Tour. And this is going to give you a tour of all the features. So, so to change this wallpaper, so I will right click the desktop, select Change Background, So I'm going to choose this background. I'll right click the desktop again. I can create a new folder here. I can right click the folder and I have all these menu options. Click on properties. I can also configure permissions for this folder. I'll right click the desktop again. I'm going to change the background. So on the lower left side, so I'm going to click on the start menu. So this is all apps. I'm going to click on that. And these are a list of all the apps. So LibreOffice is installed. So there's accessories. This is the graphics image viewer, LibreOffice draw and photos. I'll click on Internet. So Firefox is installed by default. This is Office and there's Calendar. So you can create events here and also add reminders. You can name the event. There's sound and video. So these are some of the apps that you can play video and audio. There's a sound recorder. There's system tools. So if you want to manage a disk, just click on disk. So the size of the hard drive on the computer is one terabyte. There's main menu. You can restore system configuration here. So these are the applications. So 
So you can create a new menu. So this is Power Statistics. This is the Settings app. So right now, this computer is connected to the internet by Ethernet cable. Here's Bluetooth. You can configure a Bluetooth device. Of course, this is the background. So this is a notification settings and you can configure notifications for all the, these applications. And this is the search settings. You can control which search results are shown in the activities overview. This is multitasking. This section is workspaces. So also you can configure an external monitor. So these are the applications. This is the privacy settings. This is the online account. So you can configure these online accounts. If you have a Google account, you can configure your Google email here, your Microsoft email account, also Microsoft Exchange. This is the sharing. And to turn on sharing, you just have to turn this switch on. You can configure remote desktop. And you can enable legacy VNC. So this is the song settings. This is the alert songs and you can change these. There's default and there's four other options. This is the power settings. This is the screen display settings. We can change the resolution here. This is the scale. This is the mouse and touchpad setting. This is the keyboard settings. You can change the language here. So you can add printers here. So it's already detecting printers in the network. I'll click add printers. And you can enter the IP address of the printer here. And it will search for that printer. So this is a removable media settings. Select how media should be handled. This is CD audio. You can choose which app to play CD audio in. This is DVD video. This is photos. I'll click on device, color profiles. So this is language and region, and you can change that here. This is accessibility. There's also a screen reader, and you can turn that on. So here you can add users. You can add a standard user or a user as administrator. So this is the default applications. You can configure default applications here. For example, web browsing, if you have more than one web browser, for example, Firefox and Chrome, you, you can set it here. This is the mail settings, calendar, music, video, photos. So this is the date and time settings. And this is about. I'll open Firefox.
So this is the files folder. So this is the software app folder. So there's explore, installed and updates. So on the explore section, there are different categories. You can select any one of these and download. So there's create, work, play, develop, socialize. I'll click on learn. And there are a lot of apps here you can download and install. And if you want to search for more apps, you just have to click on the search icon here and type it in. I'll click in installed. So these are a list of all the apps that I installed. And you can uninstall any one of these just by selecting uninstall. This is updates. So I'm going to install Chrome. I'll type Chrome. I'll click install. I'll click open. So Google Chrome was installed. So on the lower right side, there's the clock. You can also click on select weather location. So there's balance. So you can configure balance here, the ethernet, Wi-Fi, night light. So here you can adjust the sound. So in this video, I install Zorin OS 17.1 Core Edition in a desktop computer. So I want to thank you for watching and I thank you for subscribing.